Hello again, this is Mark Summers from Summers Technical Services. We're going to finish up on our waveguide assembly configurations. So here's our waveguide assembly. And we've got two parts that go into it. Waveguide itself, it has configurations already set up for different sizes of waveguide. So we go from the WR19 to the WR22 and up to 42. You can see those different sizes show up because we've set up that configuration table. And same thing for the flange. Here's our go to configuration manager. And again, we click on the different configurations and it updates as per our uh, mill spec data sheet we've been using for the different designs, different configurations. So now we're going to do the same thing in the assembly. And instead of changing global parameters, we're going to change components. So we use a similar strategy. We'll go to the configuration manager, insert tables, design table. And we'll create a blank one so we can create it from scratch. You've got to get a feel for the different formats required. So here's our little pop-up Excel spreadsheet. First instance, we'll type in RG018-00. Dash oh eight dash WR forty two. And so this time instead of changing parameters for global variables, we're going to change components. And the format you use similar to the others, start with a dollar sign, you type in configuration. Dollar sign configuration, and then at, and then you type in the name of the default component. In this case, is NRG 018000801. That's for our waveguide. And we'll flip it around so it's oriented vertically like we did before. And we'll copy and paste that over to here and change this to 02. So what I left off at the end of this thing, dollar sign configuration at, and then that default part name. And you have to put a open bracket and then the instance number. So we've got only one instance of the waveguide. We'll put it in anyway. And for the flanges, we want both instances, instance one and instance two. So we'll put bracket and we'll just put an asterisk to tell it we want all the instances to change based on the configuration. So there's the waveguide part one, first instance, only instance, and there's the flange part two we want both instances. So we'll roll these down and type in the different configuration assembly numbers. 34, 28, and 19. So those match 42, 34, 28. That should be 22, and then 19. So over here, we'll type in the name of that first one, which is going to be dash 01, because this is part 1, 0801, so that needs to be part 1, WR42. And I'll copy that over to here and change 01 to 02. So now we'll roll those down and change this last sets of numbers 34, 28, 22, and 19. 
and do the same thing in this column. These are all O2 parts. They need to have their specific configuration to match the assembly configuration numbers. Okay, 1922, 28, 34, 42. Those are all two parts. Those are all one parts. So I think I've got it here. So I'll click out of the design table and see if it doesn't configure, set up my configurations and it's reporting that they're correct or it's created them. We'll have to see if they're correct. So I'll double click on these one at a time and see how they change. Here's a WR19. It looks like both the flange and waveguide have changed appropriately. So let's click through the rest of them. There's 22, 28, 34, 42. So it looks like they've all updated correctly so I must have done my table correct so that's it and again when you choose a configuration over here it's active it's got the checkbox when you come back to your assembly model that's the particular one that's active in the uh, feature manager design tree so that completes our waveguide assembly we've got configurations for all combinations of waveguides. We've got configurations for the individual parts and configurations for the assemblies. It's going to be useful to us as we use these in the design in the field. We'll be able to have all these different configurations all living in one set, one model, and available to us at all times. So thanks again for joining us and stay tuned for additional SolidWorks tutorials on the Summers Technical Services YouTube page.